Welcome to the UCL Clinical Skills video demonstrating how to interpret a 12-lead ECG recording. In this video, the doctor has asked a medical student to show him how to interpret the ECG and present the findings. So first thing you want to check is um, whether your ECG is from the patient you've taken it from. Um, so you do that just by confirming their name on the top um, and also just double checking their ID, date of birth and gender. You also want to make sure that the date off the ECG is correct and it's the relevant one you want to interpret. Next thing you want to move on to is just having a, a look at the rhythm of the ECG. Best place to look is right at the bottom, your rhythm strip, which is normally lead to um, if on sort of a brief inspection it looks quite regular and you're happy with that, that's fine and you can move on. If you're a little bit unsure if you'd like to double check, it's best to actually mark out your rhythm and see if it is regular or, ir or irregular. Um, the best way to do that, and I'll show you an example of a good irregular ECG, is to get a separate piece of paper and just mark out your QRS complexes. Just a few will do. You then want to move your marks over the rest of the rhythm. If the dots match up, that suggests it's regular. If the dots don't match up, as we can see here, then that suggests it's irregular. Okay. And how would you determine the rate of the ECG? So, if your ECG is regular, as we have here, the um, best way is to count the number of big squares between the QRS complexes and then divide 300 by that number. If your um, rhythm is irregular, the best way to do it is to count the number of QRS complexes on your ECG and then times that number by six. Okay, so in this case, what's the heart rate? So in this case, the heart rate is approximately 60 beats per minute. Um, and we can find that out by calculating the QRS complexes and, and timesing it by six. And how do we determine the axis for the ECG? Sure. So there are lots of different ways. Um, one of the simplest ways is to look at two leads. So leads one and leads AVF. A normal axis is when the QRS complexes in both leads 1 and AVF are both pointing upwards. That means it's their positive QRS complexes. Um, as you can see with this ECG, um, the QRS complexes in leads 1 are positive and the complexes in AVF are negative. They're pointing downwards. That suggests um, there is a left axis deviation. With right axis deviation, both the QRS complexes in leads 1 and AVF are both pointing downwards. They're both negative. Could you try and work through the components and the complexes for the ECG for me? Sure. So the, the first wave in our ECG will be the P wave. Um, you want to make sure that there's a P wave preceding each QRS complex. You can look at that with the rhythm strip. If there aren't P waves preceding each QRS complex, that suggests that there is atrial fibrillation. This is the ECG we looked at earlier. Um, and as you can see on the rhythm strip, there are no clear uh, P waves preceding the QRS complexes, um, which is suggestive of atrial fibrillation. Um, the next component we'd normally look at is then the QRS complex. Um, the most important uh, aspect of the QRS complex is whether it's narrow or broad um, and narrow is anything less than three small squares and um, broad is anything more than three small squares. You have different abnormalities associated with the broad complex QRSs. The next aspect we'd like to look at is the SD segment. Um, the SD segment can be abnormal in lots of different pathologies. Um, one of the most common pathologies is in a ST elevation MI, a STEMI. So as you can see here, the ST segment, which is the segment between the S wave and the T wave, is elevated in the anterior and lateral chest leads. This suggests that this is a STEMI, an ST elevation myocardial infarction. In our original ECG, there are no SD abnormalities, so we can move on and have a look at the T wave. 
the T wave, you want to sort of look and see if it's abnormally large or abnormally small. Um, you might also want to look at the interval between the Q wave and the T wave. If that interval is prolonged, you'll want to investigate causes for why that might be the case. Do you have any other questions about how to interpret an ECG? That's absolutely fine. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you.